I remember Coach Smart screaming, Keeley, go down. And we were like, no, Keeley, go. That was Nolan Smith uh, reliving uh, the national championship uh, clinching touchdown from Keeley Ringo. Uh, and, you know, <laughs> of course, you can't hear anything I'm on the sideline. I've told this, I think I've told this story a couple of times, but I'll retell it. You know, Georgia's up, they're up eight. And uh, we'd just seen Brock Bauer score the touchdown and to put the dogs up eight. And here comes Alabama with Bryce Young, who is the Heisman Trophy winning quarterback, you know, an exceptional player. And, uh, you know, he's trying to make it happen uh, late, like Alabama has done so many times, 2012, 2017. Uh, to, I mean, not necessarily 2018, but that, that one, they won that game late too. Um, but they just weren't losing during that game. Uh, anyway, um, I'm just seeing this right now. Hey, listen, make sure you're picking up Double Dogs today, uh, and you're going to get our 2023 preview included. Um, what I was looking at the screen was someone had just ordered that. So take advantage of that now while you can, because I, I can I run out of the magazine in the past. We don't want that again. So here comes, you know, Kirby screaming. I don't know how Nolan heard Kirby. I'm just being honest. You know, I was I was not where Nolan was, obviously. I wasn't that far from Kirby. I, I, I don't uh, – it, it may have been more than Kirby screaming because once the head coach starts screaming something, everybody else does it. But anyway, Nolan was like, no, go. And, the, and, and Kirby talked about this a lot. The right play was to keep going because there was about – it wasn't like there was 20 seconds left in the game. I mean, there was there was some time left. I mean, Alabama could have called timeout and so forth. But um, for me, and I can only you know y'all y'all experienced it through your eyes, whether you were at home or as is growing now, you were at the stadium. Um, you know where I was. Georgia just scored the touchdown with Brock Bowers. And when, um, you know, I, 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 as a photographer on the field, have Georgia coming at me at all times because only very rarely, I mean, it's very odd, um, does the play that, that matters for a photographer or for someone that covers a particular team very rarely does it happen on the other end. Let's keep that in mind as the story keeps moving forward. So Alabama gets the ball, they move it a little bit, they move it a little bit. And and I said out loud to uh, uh, the University of Georgia's official photographer, who I've sort of known a little bit for time, you get to know people on the sideline. But, uh, you know, I said to him, I said, we've seen this before. You know, I said, and then and I was thinking, and he said, yeah, it said no over until it's over. And so we both kind of sat there. And then, you know, as a photographer, you make your own decision when to move, right? And, you know, when Alabama got the ball to about the 30-yard line, I thought to myself, this game's going to get decided in the end zone. I need to go to the other end zone. So what happened was, uh, you know, Bama kept moving the ball a little bit. It wasn't like they were just striking it down the field. So I had time to move. And um, so I get up from the end zone where I had just been, and I start going to the other end zone. Well, Alabama doesn't, doesn't keep moving the ball. And so I'm somewhat stuck in a way. And uh, surrounding me are the usual people on the sidelines, except this time it was David Pollock and his son and uh, Ben Watson, who was very – like into the game and uh, you know Alabama comes keeps coming down the field a little bit and it's eventually it's a third down and you can really hear the crowd going because this was probably 60 70 percent Georgia crowd in Indianapolis it was something like that somebody else can correct me they had more people but I don't know how many more because the colors look so similar but uh, Georgia had the crowd and the crowd was really rocking and rolling at that moment and um Bryce throws the ball, and, you know, as Keeley said, or as uh, Nolan said, you know, dear God, let us get that or something like that. And so Keeley comes down with it, and, you know, the whole place explodes. And whether you're, you know, Jeff Foxworthy or you're, you know, 
some fan that people don't know the name of who you are, people got very emotional when Keeley got that ball because <clears throat> I think for a long time, people don't believe something will come true until it's too late and it's already coming true or it's already co or it's coming true in front of your eyes. And that's what happened. It has been my opinion for a while, I mean, probably 15 years, that Georgia should be winning national championships, period, in football. And that's, that's not to be, you know, any other way than to say that. I say that about other programs. I cover Georgia. There's a difference. You hear me talk about that. But LSU should win. And SC should win. Texas and the Gators, they should win national championships. Well, Georgia should, too. Uh, in fact, Georgia's most well-positioned when you look at things. So when Keeley came down with the ball, I think the emotion of that moment, you know, we will never see that moment again. Somebody my age won't. I would be 86 years old to wait another 40 years to see Georgia win the national championship. Like, and that's not going to happen for me. But, you know, on the sideline, it was – you know, Kirby, Lauren, and Kirby undoubtedly was screaming it at Keeley, William Poole, and uh, and I can't believe I forgot Christopher uh, Smith's name for a second there. But the three of them start taking off riding, you know, and then Dan Jackson is either beside them or in front of them. But when Keeley gets a hold of the ball, See, this guy's got track speed. He's like a DB, but he's he's faster than most DBs, okay? So he's not just defensive back fast. He's abnormally fast. And, you know, he starts taking off. And the, the sideline, like, I, there's a picture. So, of course, I was on the wrong sideline. And, and I was on the right sideline, but I was on the wrong – and you can't choose these things. I thought the play would be determined. I frankly thought Georgia would have to save themselves on a two-point conversion. I, I, Looking back on it, I think that's what I was feeling at the time was Alabama might score a touchdown. They might, but they're not going to score the two-point conversion. That was my opinion. And then, of course, with the way Georgia was moving the ball, they'd probably just gotten down the field and kicked the field goal to win it anyway, but whatever. Um, Dylan Weber has shot for me since 2016. And he was on the field as they're coming at him. And not all photographs are ones you nail. Sometimes you get it wrong, and it just is a great shot. So there's this shot of Keeley that's blurred. And in the background of it, it's Quavo, Richard LeCount, DeAndre Swift, and a lot of other, uh, you know, Georgia folks. And, like, their hands are on their head. I mean, it's like an amazing moment. And Dylan kept firing because he knew, he knows that as you go, you know, you don't stop shooting. So as he goes down, and, and when I put it in dog structure, I, I just thought it was too many images to put 16 in a row or whatever. But as you go, as he goes down, um, there's uh, Mary Beth. The children. Mary Beth's got her finch, fist clinch. I mean, this is an old basketball player. She knows how to compete, right? Uh, Josh, uh, Josh Brooks, the athletic director, is with his child, and I believe his wife was right there with him. And Josh has got is jumping in the air. It was an emotional moment, the likes of which I don't know if you could recreate that. And you know, I've covered three national championship games with Georgia. And what happens in those days is you like win, lose, you're going to be up all night because there's just so much going on. Uh, we don't end those nights typically with the players and coaches and, you know, media responsibility before two, like two o'clock in the morning. It, it just doesn't happen. So um, that night was pe – people – you know, that had never watched Georgia win the national championship and never thought they would. They uh, they saw something. It was like watching a ghost. And, you know, for Nolan to be able to run down that field and sprint, right, and sprint, you, 
I cannot imagine the f feeling of euphoria that Nolan had after all that work and being from Savannah too. You know, he, he will tell you he's a Georgia kid, like he's from Georgia. And it meant a lot to Nolan. It meant a lot to all those guys. And um, it, it just, it's hard to, it's hard to, the closest you get to that is when Georgia and Florida are both ranked and it's a tight game and Georgia wins. That's that's as close as it gets because Alabama Georgia is its own colossal game. It's not a rivalry in the truest sense of the firm, uh, word. They don't play every year. I mean, it would be like the Yankees and the Dodgers, something like that, or you know, the Cowboys and Steelers. But they are two huge brands, programs. The uh, you know. Bo Schembechler and Woody Hayes never had this because all they were competing for were conference championships. Nick and Kirby, they're playing for national championships three, or two times. Two times. It's insane. Anyway, it was a, it was a nutty night.